Tuesday, August 9th. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Well, parts of Iowa State have done it again. As temperatures have gone, dew point temperatures have gone to 81 degrees, and that's just from randomly looking at some of the cities that the National Weather Service offers official uh, forecast information. Not so many cities, actually, where you have uh, dew point, accurate dew point information. Uh, the dew point was 81 degrees in a certain city in Iowa for many, many hours. In fact, some of that time, the temperature also is 81 degrees, bringing the relative humidity to 100%. This occurred on August 6th. A brutal heat over there. Some area in Iowa, heat index 113. There's no reason to believe that that was the peak in the state of Iowa since that was just randomly checking some cities. 113 degrees as the peak heat index as this heat and humidity finally comes to an end, came to an end earlier in the day on Monday. It certainly was several days of hot and very humid conditions the east coast new york city gets its final day of hot and very humid conditions today tuesday as high temperatures go well into the 90s dew points mid and upper 70s the dew points are very high very high i don't know if they're going to hit 80 degrees like they do in the midwest but in the Midwest, it's spotty, 80 degrees. St. Louis area, dew points at 79 degrees in some of those locations. But generally speaking, maximum dew points were between 6, 76 and 78 degrees. Heat index in the St. Louis area, maximum heat index, 108 or 109 degrees. But daily heat indices above 105 did occur over, over the past several days. Maximum temperature 99, very hot, humid conditions, very humid. The high humidity has been a major thing over in Missouri and you know, it's the flash flooding. The soil over there absorbs tons of moisture as well, unlike Arizona, unlike Arizona where although there is some flash flooding, but dust storms continue to develop every now and then. There was a little bit of a break of the monsoonal moisture over in Arizona over the weekend, but that has come to an end. The high pressure system responsible for this flow, the east flow from the Gulf of Mexico to Phoenix, Arizona, bringing showers and thunderstorms, probably a lot less than what the forecast indicates. Uh, is moving just to the northeast of the four-cornered area, and that's going to bring back that monsoonal moisture for the next couple of days as we see those dew points rise back into the 60s. I don't think it's anything phenomenal like we saw a couple of weeks ago. I don't think it is. Although that, uh, you know, it hasn't been anything phenomenal over the past few days. In fact, in the afternoon, they've been getting a dry heat. The temperature even hit 108 degrees because of that over the past couple of days. Uh, the humidity did come back, but only a moderate form. And we'll have to see what happens later on this week if that phenomenal humidity actually does come back. What happened uh, a while back, quite interesting, but the monsoonal moisture does continue for that area. Flash flooding for parts of Arizona due to that the St. Louis area, the St. Louis area, thunderstorms, possible flash flooding, torrential downpours are possible. Those storms are expected to die down as that front moves south of St. Louis. And not only will the front move south, it's going to move well south of St. Louis. So even the rain that develops just to the north of the front, even that will probably remain south of St. Louis, but very close to the St. Louis area on Tuesday. We're going to see cooler and drier conditions gradually filter into the area over the next couple of days. Now, this heat and humidity, as we mentioned, moves off to the East Coast. Now, in the East Coast, you look at the forecast discussion from the various National Weather Service. One thing that they all have in common is Bermuda High. Bermuda High. In the Midwest, it's always the high pressure ridge. The high pressure ridge. You look on a map, a lot of times what you have is that Bermuda High. You have a high pressure system situated a few hundred miles away from Bermuda. Bermuda. 
and that's pumping a south flow. By the time you hit the east coast in the real heat waves like we have right now, you have a southwest flow. But some of that is going into the Gulf of Mexico and feeds into this other ridge in the Midwest or the plains. So they are getting kind of a little bit of a connection, although you rarely hear this connection spoken about, but it is spoken about every now and then. So there is a connection. Uh, some of that moisture does get into the Midwest. We get Gulf of Mexico moisture in the Midwest, and then you get those cornfields. And this time around, even without the cornfields, we're seeing high dew points. But the Iowa cornfields have taken over, it looks like, as dew points have gone into the low 80s over there. Although we have seen 80 degree dew points this year as early as June in the St. Louis area. Amazing, totally amazing to get such high dew points that early in the year. Plus, we even went through a period of, it's like, we went through a period of drought as well, where the temperatures soared way up, 105 in St. Louis. I think that's been the maximum. I don't think it's hit 106 yet. I think 105 was the maximum for that Saturday, July 23rd, 105 degrees. Really strange stuff. We really have different things coming together. It's not even the dry line because that remains off to the west. Now, over the next several days, one if one kind of thought that maybe the reason why it's getting cooler is because the dog days of summer are coming to an end, that's uh, quickly uh, slugged up. Or <laughs> you quickly see that that's not correct as you see North Plate, Nebraska temperatures. According to some of the computer models, four straight days of triple digit heat. But the European computer model shows high temperatures mid and upper 90s for four straight days for North Plate, Nebraska. And what's amazing over there is they're under a south flow. A south flow, even a southwest flow, bringing brutal heat to the city. And it's just on the border. It just always looks like that front's about to push through North Plate, Nebraska, but it never really does for quite some time. It's an extended spell of heat. It, despite the fact it barely makes it in at times, but the south flow does continue, so it's the models better be accurate or else there could be drastic changes in those temperatures. But the models are accurate. There's high confidence in the situation over there. We don't have a lake like here in the Chicago area where you don't really know what's going to happen next. Chicago saw its share of high humidity over the past couple of days. That high humidity combined also occurred in combination with high heat on Saturday this past Shabbos as temperatures soared into the mid-90s both at O'Hare Airport and Midway. But the heat indices were much higher at Midway, much higher at Midway because the 95 degrees occurred at the same time when dew points were about 73, producing a heat index of 105 at Midway. Nothing close to that at O'Hare Airport. You know, around 100, maybe a little bit higher than that. But 105 is a new threshold. It's uh, a lot of places start to issue heat advisories. Some areas like New York City starts to eat, uh, starts to issue a heat warning. In fact, today, uh, in some of the uh, urban areas, the heat index might hit 105 for short periods of time in New York. We have the European computer model pushing a high of 97 for both Baltimore and New York for today, but highs in the 90s across the East Coast, Boston, Massachusetts, I believe Providence, Rhode Island as well, and the entire East Coast, unlike previous situations that I have seen this summer, this time around the entire East Coast is really under the same flow, it's just the same flow, it's a power. It's a solid flow, southwest flow. Speaking about flow, one thing that has to be taken into consideration are the wind speeds when dealing with the heat index. When temperatures are 95 or under 95 or in high humidity, 95. So those winds really do make a difference. So, you know, St. Louis, you have some places which had light winds. The In Iowa, where that dew point was 81, they actually had pretty strong winds. So 
you know, you really have to talk to somebody there to see if it really was as hot as these charts say. Sometimes you see these winds of three miles per hour, like in St. Charles, Missouri, or Belleville, Illinois. Those areas tend to get high dew points. I don't know exactly why, but the St. Louis area also had high dew points, also downtown St. Louis. And, you know, high heat and high humidity with very little wind is just torture. But once you get that wind, there's a chill in the air, unless the temperature is higher than 95 degrees. So in that case, as we've mentioned many times, the wind, if you haven't heard this before, it's going to be a big shocker to most people. If you have heard it, of course, it's not a shocker. But the wind makes conditions feel hotter when temperatures are higher than 95. The only time really that makes a big difference. Number one is if a person's swimming and they just get out of the swimming pool. So that wind, if the temperature is higher than 95, really dries a person off and it feels, it feel, they feel warm, no matter how wet they are. Okay, number two is motorcycle racing. In temperatures higher than 95, is really dangerous. You have winds that are very strong. That occurs in Kansas every year. They have much bigger problems with heat-related stress and illness, windy conditions, temperatures higher than 95, then years where you have high humidity, and that's by motorcycle reasons. So over the next several days, we have a high pressure ridge, that heat starts to rebuild again in the plains, you see consistent highs return into the mid and upper 90s, unbelievable, according to the European computer model for Kansas City, Missouri where St. Louis consistently seems to stay under 90, seems to do that. Now, we'll talk about in a moment why, but Kansas City sizzles at 97 degrees, and we've mentioned, you know, Kansas City also tends to get the humidity. You have North Plate, Nebraska, they tend to not get the humidity, so temperatures can really shoot up over there. So, you know, you have heat building all the way up there. So this is just, uh, you know, the, just the weather patterns changing for the next couple of days. No real indicator of anything from fall. The only thing which sounded like that it was when the Baltimore National Weather Service decided to mention that dew points might be dropping into the 40s uh, after this cold front hits over there. That <laughs> That's quite low, dew points in the 40s. Dew points nowhere near that here for most of the Midwest. I don't know about the upper Midwest, but dew points remaining in the 50s and 60s, even after the cold front moves through. We're going to see a return to southwest flow of heat and humidity back to even into the Chicago area by the latter part of the weekend. So this high pressure ridge eventually does make it once again, not not just to St. Louis, that's no chiddush over there, nothing sh- nothing new about that but the chicago area also gets into the action once again i don't know how warm it's going to be over here but we're going to see also those chances for thunderstorms start to increase a big thing right now is the flash flooding it's a very big thing and that's something which just you know it started in spring then it went away and then it started again and it's just been constant and it's over the same area To me, it kind of reminds me of the situation in 1993, where I remember there just being a front just over the mid-Mississippi Valley and just continuous heavy downpours on a daily basis. So we have stuff like that going on. Typical early August weather pattern for the southeast part of the United States, afternoon, daily afternoon thunderstorms. That's just typical stuff for over there. The monsoonal moisture, I can't really tell you if it's typical or not. It seems like maybe it's more consistent than usual, but um, that could also be that in the past many years we've had such droughts over there that maybe this year is actually closer to normal. Can't really say. We have also heat building an area where we did see temperatures in the hundreds was in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Colorado going well into the 90s, probably a few 100 degree temperatures there for today. The part of the country that's going to see rain and thunderstorms today is significantly larger today than it was yesterday on Monday. It's really going to cover the mid-Mississippi, well, just south of the mid-Mississippi Valley and then going really from 
Texas all the way up to the East Coast. You know, the front eventually does move through the New York area by early evening today. That's, a, you know, six, seven o'clock today. So thunderstorms are a good possibility. Probably not severe. Maybe, you know, you never know with the severe, but there's not a lot of it, it, tornado stuff and stuff like that. Is, it's not really favorable for that, but torrential downpours is always that it's always a possibility i would think damaging winds as well but you know there's not really much talk about that baltimore as well but for baltimore it's not really happening until wednesday that's when the front really moves through over there temperatures might not hit 90 wednesday but the humidity is going to be really high and temperatures might hit 90 but, you know the front moves through uh, you know, the Baltimore National Weather Service is describing, has a very different description of the weather map than the New York City National Weather Service. So I guess <laughs> to, to solve the problem, you can just look at the weather map yourself. Uh, they have the city uh, going under two cold fronts. They have two cold fronts, but the second one they say is a strong cold front will push through Baltimore the, over the weekend and dew points will be dropping into the 40s. The New York National Weather Service tells us that the cold front moves through on Tuesday, but that front, a low pressure system, a wave of low pressure, which rides along the front, is gonna try to push that front back north towards New York Wednesday or Thursday, especially Thursday, and then that front finally moves on south, so the cooler air comes in after that. So, uh, you know, they have that little piece of information in regards, I guess that's front number one. That's not going to be the strong front. Can't be. That can't be the strong front. So, because that front is, oh, actually, that front is supposed to dissipate. The New York National Weather Service tells that front's going to dissipate or weaken, possibly even dissipate on some, some point, you know, the heat and humidity will pretty much remain around until, I guess, that second front, that, that's the stronger front, that moves through and brings cooler and drier conditions with high temperatures, upper 70s to low 80s for New York for this upcoming weekend. And then the warmth and the humidity return to the New York area as the southwest flow returns, just like it does here in the Midwest. We are starting to get more of a normal something more normal these days where the weather goes from west to east as it is supposed to do you know for a while we were not seeing that the east coast was escaping heat wave after heat wave but in recent times and it looks like over the next couple of weeks at least for the next week we're gonna see weather moving from west to east we have the heat and humidity in the plains and then that moves over to the mid mississippi valley even into the chicago area it doesn't just stay in the mid mississippi valley it moves to the chicago area it's stuff that would be happening like in spring and uh, you know you have the weather it goes from west to east so that's what we have here developing the st louis area the reason why temperatures are not going to be getting into the upper 90s as of now is because of something called the backdoor cold front where you know, usually these high pressure systems that come off the Great Lakes, they stay far enough east that they do not affect the St. Louis area. There really isn't, the word usually, I guess, really depends on the summer and the time of the year. So St. Louis is close enough this time around to that high pressure system where they will be getting some of that cooler air and Kansas City is far enough away where the heat will continue for that area maximum heat index again that I saw over the past few days was 113 but there probably were places that saw higher heat indices than that you know other than that I think we covered much of the country there's always something that's missing right always something that's missing one of the things that happens in phoenix the reason why phoenix continues to see triple digit heat even with the monsoonal moisture is because of the drying out that occurs in the afternoon nonetheless temperatures over the next week are expected to be either near normal or slightly below normal but that still brings temperatures into the triple digit area you know as mentioned before we did see a high of 108 in phoenix over the past few days 
highs probably will be in the triple digits daily over the next week. And at the same time, humidity at times, there will be humidity at times. In the afternoon, there may not be, but the humidity might actually be ideal at times in the afternoon. And it has to be looked into more to see whether those 70 degree dew points will be returning. So one thing that should be pointed out, uh, meteorologist Tom Skilling mentioned a number of years ago. Now, believe it or not, he mentioned the reason why Phoenix, Arizona has been seeing 70 degree dew points in recent years is because <laughs> this is um, this is amazing. It's because of the swimming pools. The number people are buying so many swimming pools there that the moisture levels are just going way up. So this is something, this is in addition to the monsoonal moisture coming off the Gulf of Mexico, we have a swimming pool situation taking place in Phoenix. So each area is having a their own thing. You know, you have the Gulf of Mexico plus cornfields in Iowa. You have the Gulf of Mexico plus high uh, moisture in the soil for Missouri. And then you have the Gulf of Mexico plus the swimming pool situation for Phoenix, Arizona. You know, there still are dust storms occurring. So I don't really know what the soil moisture level is, the moisture in the soil. But, uh, you know, Phoenix just isn't known for that. So I'm not there. I don't really know. But swimming pool, that Phoenix is unique in that. It, You'll never hear that about the Midwest city, that the reason for the high dew point is because of an increase in swimming pools. But in Phoenix, that is one of the reasons why they're seeing 70 degree dew points in general. When that happens over the past, you know, this is already 10 years ago. And as we see those swimming pools increase, we see those dew points increase. And that's something that could be taken into consideration. Also, if there really are rains that are occurring, so that also increases the dew point as well. Uh, One of the things that is impressive, just to point out, is that the Chicago area, we had a day where the temperature did not fall below 78. But in St. Louis, the temperature remained 80 or higher for a full 24-hour period. That's considered, uh, some say actually, that the real danger is that. It's not really the high temperatures. It's to determine the real name of the game when determining the danger of the heat is not the high temperature, what the high temperature will be. Rather, it's what the minimal temperature will be. There are articles about this. When the minimal temperature remains 80 or higher, that's when the serious heat illness, that's when there's serious danger on the population. The people who do not have air conditioning do not have a chance to cool off. And that's the more serious danger. So you have to wonder if the temperatures are 80 degrees with high humidity and they don't really go too high during the day you know there's no heat advisory issued in that type of a situation but in a certain way that might even be more dangerous it's something that you know miami they're used to it they don't get the intense heat in miami they don't get heated the 105 heat index but those minimal temperatures do remain high anyways i wish everybody a wonderful night thank you for your interest in listening and enjoy.